Hi, I'm Naomi, and today I'm going to show you how I made this wolf and moon painting. So it's like a mini tutorial, time lapse type thing. And um, I got a bunch of questions about art technique from my Instagram followers. Thank you for asking. Um, and I put timestamps down of when I'm answering them. So let's get started. So, first, tools um, really normal, really basic, cheap tools. Um, for some of the like powerful blue hues, I use this fountain pen ink, um, regular paint brushes, nothing super fancy, uh, but also not the cheapest kind. And then uh, normal watercolors, I don't know the name of these or anything, um, I think I found them in a dumpster a few years ago. And um, a little bit of white gouache for the highlights and for the extremely, <laughs> for the extremely highlighty highlights, like where I really want the white to pop. Tiny bit of acrylic. I forgot to say what paper I use. It's Hadamula Acid Free, but my favorite paper is Fabriana. So I started out making a very simple pencil sketch with a very thin pencil, and I used some reference photos. I got a bunch of questions on that, so I'll get to that in a minute. And then as you get to painting, I think it's important to cover as much of the white area of the paper as soon as possible, because it gives you a better perception of color. I know not every artist agrees with this, and some like to keep really clean white areas um, until they like get to that bit, but I disagree just because of color perception and how colors are so relative to each other. Someone asked about ambience while painting, and I think scents are very important. Quite a few of you asked about reference photos, and I pretty much just have one thing to say. For the most part, I don't use them at all. Um, here, when it's animals that I don't paint a whole lot and that are very complicated, I use some, of course, um, but I try to make sure to use different ones, like several photos for the same painting, and to make sure I interpret them. Um, and interpret means absolutely no tracing. Um, which also answers the question of where to find reference photos. If you're not tracing your photos um, and you're just using them to inspire you, then you can find them any place. Any old search engine will do. Um, for this wolf pup that you see down here, of course, I use a reference photo for the pose because it's quite complicated and the angle is more complicated. But then after I got the pose down and sort of um, the angle of his face, I didn't look back at that photo. So I don't think the photographer would mind if they do, I'm sorry. Interrupting the time lapse here, just to say something. Um, this is like the mid-stage of a painting. I always hate it at this point. I always question why I make art in the first place. Why did I spend so much time on this? Is it ever going to come together in any way, shape, or form? But then I get past it and then I get excited again. Um, so part of making art for me is like training myself not to pay so much attention to my feelings about art, but just showing up and making. And yeah, this is going to come together soon so that um, this is around the time that I start feeling better about my work. I'm just sharing that in case anybody else suffers from the same thing and maybe it's helpful to know that you're not alone. Um, I got another question about how to keep watercolors crisp and not muddied. Um, part of that is patience. You have to let paint dry in between your layers. Um, part of it is using smaller paint brushes. Um, part of it is using less water and paint on your brush. And part of it also for me is cheating, to be honest. Um, like I said in the beginning, I use a little bit of ink, a little bit of gouache, and even tiny, tiny dibs, dabs, whatever, of acrylic. So um, that can really help as well. Um, and the difference between muddy and crispy can be kind of a fine line, you know, a tiny little shadow or a tiny little highlight or a crisp line somewhere can make something that is actually quite, like, misty and not so detailed look detailed. I think um, I'm not a realistic painter, that's not what I go for, but I think um, the trick to making something look realistic is like a juxtaposition between 
very crisp lines and shading and also quite like a misty faded look and learning how to contrast those two things um, can really work wonders. Of course I got a few questions about inspiration as well and I think I'd like to get back to something that I've written and talked about before which is I'm not sure I mean I think inspiration is absolutely everywhere and I think part of the work of an artist is clearing hurdles that stand in the way of inspiration rather than finding it. In a sense, nobody knows where inspiration comes from. But I think part of it, a huge part of it, is just loving groovy shit. I mean, don't you remember that feeling of being a kid and just seeing a movie or hearing a piece of music, anything, and it just lit your soul up? I think that's more um, rare, <laughs> happens less in adulthood, but still, I think that's pure inspiration, and it's it's loving the medium. Um, so, I don't know, in a way I think inspiration is love, and in a way I think it's divine, and, I, and making art or music or whatever is about channeling it, and in that sense, again, removing obstacles. And here's me removing the very literal tape that held the painting down because it's finally finished. And while I do that, I'm going to say a word or two about all the questions I didn't respond to. So like 80% of the questions I received on Instagram when I asked um, were about how to keep flowing, how to stay disciplined as an artist, how to stay inspired. And the short answer to that is really boring. It's so much discipline. Showing up even when you don't feel like it, um, sitting down and waiting for inspiration to come or going about your daily chores or distracting yourself and waiting for inspiration, that's not going to work and it's not going to happen. Except during very rare moments, of course, when it, it'll hit you like a truck while you're doing something else. Most inspiration happens while you're actually working. You show up and the muse is like, okay, I'll show up too. But the long answer to that question is something that I could talk about forever and would actually love to talk about forever. So I hope to be able to make more videos because this is part of my passion. Um, finished work and some of the tools, some I used, some I didn't use. Um, yeah. Don't forget to clean your brushes, kids. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you like video content, please consider supporting me on Patreon so I can make more of it. And before I sign off, a huge, huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. I love you a lot. Bye.